Hey everybody, welcome back to part 4 of 4 Stars Without Numbers Prep for the Sector Kevlin whatever Right now we're looking at probably finishing it up I'm Gonna go ahead and set up Starvation Cheap Which is the Mercenary Legion Prep We've got our Sector Systems and planets, and now we need to design a military campaign, create planetary wars and conflicts, make our mercenary legions and armies, prepare for the worst, or in this case, the best. Combat is great, and no one ever dies, except all the people you don't care about. So let's see here. Uh, I gotta tell you, <laughs> there's gonna be a lot of mumbling and lack of knowing what I'm doing because I am not as familiar with Starvation Cheap as I am with Stars of That Numbers or Sons of Gold. So prepare for the thrilling chance to watch me bumble through all of it. All of it. So we've got a fabric of war. We've got to create armies. Once you've roughed out the major wars available to your campaign, so let's start there. Let's write down what the major wars are and who the players are. Which means I'm also going to need to open up sector uh, information so that I know how many people live on each system. All right, there are a couple major conflicts. Look, number one. Uh, I think these are the people that the yeah the Maltec cultists, the fighting uh, in the Catalyst system. Fighting in the Catalyst system is Maltec cultists. Versus anyone. <laughs> They're fighting an entire planetary government. Is there a Stars Without Numbers scenario with Earth coming back? I don't think so. I have most of the books. I mean, you could definitely make a campaign around doing that for sure. But it's not part of the game. There is a version of Stars Without Numbers where you play on Earth after the scream, but before the rise back into the stars where Earth is a horrible shithole and everybody's a mutant uh, and you try desperately to survive. Okay, uh, and this is the Catla sector. What do we have going on here, right? I think Catla is uh, 701. They're the wives of Ptolemyos. Interesting. So they're not the dudes that are trying to see the planet. 700. Made a system. Planet Arnora. Ah, uh, yep, that's it. Alright, so Catla is not currently in conflict. So let's wipe it. Not currently in Earth's tech level was 5 before the scream. It's pre-tech. I mean, it's literally the definition of pre-tech. Okay, so... Well, it seems like Catla would have some fighting. Hundreds of... Billions of inhabitants, Cold War of zombies. I feel like we're still gonna do this. It's not a conflict that is hitting the faction turns. Uh... Imperialist. Oh, yes, they are, um, I'll get this. They're the nation of Potomayos. Mayos. The wise. Versus. Maltech. Zombie cult. All right, so... Uh, Potomayos has about half the population, so they have hundreds of millions of people. We're going to say they have 500 million. 
And the Maltech zombie cult is going to have... I don't know. We'll say, like, 5,000. However, the... What is Maltech? Maltech is uh, a universally agreed-upon illegal weaponry. Like, nanoviruses, or biological diseases, or technically nukes. Uh, unbraked artificial intelligence. Sometimes aliens get thrown in there. Uh, oh, that's right. They also have the zombies. Yeah, I'm going to give them a lot more. So, I don't know. Let's say they have a million zombies. And I expect the Maltechians will probably play pretty well get things done so next sector on the line is the uh meta system which has the screaming void mines screaming void mines versus planetary government fight all right, so there are billions of inhabitants, so I'm going to give them, well, I'll just say like five billion. Five keeps coming up a lot. And Screaming Boyd Vines, we're going to say that they have like 5,000 people. And their whole army is probably going to be every single one of them. Uh, and they will be fighting to unseal the menace. What's interesting is, if the players don't take this fight, if they don't take this contract to start with, on the faction level, the Screaming Void Mines are the only group that has a military on the planet, and so they are going to instantly win by default. By technical elimination, Screaming Void Mines are the winners. Next fight... Uh, Industrialita, are these the anti-psionics? Uh, they're the anti-psionic watchdogs. So, Vargolopolis. Eric Vulgarolopolis, is what I'm going to call it. Probably easier to just copy-paste. You got a name hecka like this. Uh, so this is... Local anti-psionics... Versus Perimeter Agency. Fight. Right? Is that a thing? I feel like that's a thing. We wrote it down. Perimeter Agency fights the Jade Pact. Yes, Jade Pact is located on 0600, which is Vargolopolis. So let's make sure that's reflected. Jade Pact. Psionic versus not psionic. And... These people have hundreds of thousands. So we're going to say 300,000 citizens in this fight. Oh yeah, we got to put the tech level. These guys are tech level 3. Forgot about that. Or Catla L four and the Jade Pact rolls the planet of Medicia with let's say four hundred thousand. And they have TL4. So, I mean, this guy's got Jade Packs, got laser rifles. And the Perimeter Agency has assault rifles with bullets. On the other hand, they also have psionics. You've never seen a mass combat in any system. Well, you missed out when we did it in... Oh, gosh, what was it called? I mean, it's Winter's Edge. You missed out on the Winter's Edge one. 
We'll do one shortly when the mass combat kicks in. I mean, we're edging very close on a mass combat. Uh, Vargolopolis. Dr. Poppinlockadopolis. Uh, Dota in the Clytee system is under attack by... Let's see. Somebody's going to another planet. It's a steel combine. With an RKO out of nowhere. But it's not currently a conflict. I'm going to write down that it might be a conflict soon. So... The Dota system. Might be attacked by Thordis sector. And I think that's all the conflicts in the sector. Dreaming Void Mines, Jade Pack, The Wise of Ptolemyos. Yep. Yep, yep, we got them all. Nailed it. Alright. So we've got three, which is good because you need to have at least three contracts. And a variety of things. Wait, where was the one where the... We had a planet, shoot, where like a TL5 super cult was fighting a bunch of savage beasts. And I was really interested in having that be a thing. Is that Thordis? It is Thordis. Yep. All right. So Thordis is on the map. Thordis is totally on the map. It's super important. All right, so for Thordis, we have millions of individuals. So on one side, we've got pre-tech cultists with one million citizens versus streaming hordes of untrained uh, savages. They are TL5. And these guys have 99 million at TL0. That is going to be a heck of a fight. And when I go to playtest this game, that's probably the fight that I want to play out. Because it gives the players a really good option. Do they want to be the offensive side of a group of super snotty people? Or they want to be the defensive side of 99 million untrained savages attempting to break apart this perfect utopian society. My defensive side, I mean, they're both trying to kill each other pretty badly. Okay, you need to calculate the general size of the army based on the available population. Break the army up into units based on the quality of leadership and type of forces they might field. For NPC's army, this is as much as you might need to do. For the army or mercenary legion the players belong to, you'll need to make brass characters to take on the roles of the army's commanding officers. Uh, so let's make sure we've got the player army. We'll probably rename it something other than player army once I have players. Time to bring in the heavy artillery? Well, I believe that the tutorial army that we'll be creating will in fact have delicious, delicious... Uh, organic artillery. It'll have a artillery company integrated into the battalion. All right, blah blah blah. Mercenaries, list of clients, make vital points, all that bull crap. Thank you for dice for the bits and also for the pre-stream bits, my friend. Quick commander generation. We can skip that. Blah 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 blah. Setting up tags, choosing vital points. What happened to having armies? I feel like we should have armies. All right. We're going to go down the line, though. <laughs> Setting up tags. We'll, go, we'll do this piece by piece. If you have Starvation Cheap, which is, of course, available on DriveThruRPG. I'm currently on page 36, but skipping past a lot. <laughs> Safe bets, dirty jobs, crusades, heavy contracts, gambles. All right. To determine the reasons a war starts, I, we've already got that. We don't need we don't need those things. Choose vital points. A war is won or lost by control of vital points. These points can be literal locations on the map, such as a peak with a commanding field of fire on the only usable pass through a mountain range, or it can be more metaphorical points, such as the support of a high tech enclave.
Sorry to cough it out. Support of a high-tech enclave of religious enthusiasts who have an advanced factory complex. Each vital point initially belongs to a side, and if all their points are captured or destroyed, that side is no longer capable of prosecuting the war. A number of vital points to choose for a side depends on the size of importance of the war to that side. A powerful hegemonic nation that really isn't all that interested in the fight may only have a few vital points representing limited reserves that they'll tolerate before they decide the war isn't worth their effort. A hard-pressed group of rebels might only have a few vital points as well as their fragile force. Conversely, a small nation fighting desperately for its survival might have significantly more points. If the war is small, the nation is small, or the nation's interest is small, give it three to four vital points. For a major war between significant planetary powers, give it six to eight. And for giant conflagrations between superpowers, give it 12 to 16. I'm not going to have any giant super conflagrations yet. But this is a pretty big conflict, so we are going to give them uh, six and six because they're both high. Well, I'm going to give this side four because they literally only have they have a million zombies, but they don't have that many people as part of the club, right? They're the five thousand person zombie cult. Yes, Tice, go ahead and spam all your shitty Hamilton memes now. Okay. Uh, these guys definitely want to take the planet, and these guys don't even know what's about to happen. So they are going to have three points. Bargalopolis, this is a major conflict. We are going to have seven and seven. This is probably going to be the mainstay fight. <clears throat> and Thordis, uh, well, the Pretech cultists don't care that much, so we're going to give them four. And these guys are going to have eight. <clears throat> Once you know how many vital points, you need to characterize them. Military, industrial, political, social. Okay, military vital points are fortresses, commanding terrain locations, important recruiting training areas. Industrial vital points are factory complexes, major industrial cities. Political vital points are abstract. They might be an important noble's family seat, a symbolic capital city, or the financial support of the rich gentry. Social points are the linchpin of the local civil society. Important cities, holy sites, or moral support for revealed locals. So, let's go through here. We might have to generate some random, because there's a lot to do. Uh, but important vital points for the Maltex. I think it's going to be a social point. And I think that point is going to be uh, a religious underground meeting place. Uh, and this is their recruitment center. They take in the disenfranchised of society and bring them there. Probably they're going to want a industrial point uh, where they manufacture Maltech for use on the battlefield. That's how they make their zombies. They need a military vital point. Uh, and this is... Gosh, what do a zombie nation need? Oh, they probably need some sort of transportation hub. Hub for gathering and releasing zombies discreetly into cities. And a political. And this is going to be funding. Insane and eccentric noble. Yes, of course I'll fund your zombie war against the humanity, of course. Yes, 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 you've got it correct. All right, six vital points for the Ptolemaios. Uh, we're going to do one of everything, so social. Chat, I'm going to need your help for a couple of these. We got social, industrial, military. Political. Uh, to remind you who Potomaios is.
Two sides of a cold war accuse each other of funding the cultists. Most of their armies are used to fight the zombie menace, but special forces and intelligence are used to battle each other. The Caribbean nature, Judah Leon, is a laissez-faire open society of drug use, music, culture, and violence. The Grecian nation, Ptolemaios, is closed, an intellectual republic of senators representing the people's will. I'm going to give you guys military and social, huh? I'm going to give you guys a flex here. You get to pick the last two spots, apparently military and social. You tell me what goes in them. What's important to a bunch of Greek senators? Social point. I mean, obviously the Senate. They lose the Senate, they're done. Uh, it's super important. But the actual thing... Well, no, I think Senate's probably political. What would be social? I'll random roll it. And uh, we'll see. Social conflict. 2d6. It's a major population center that steadies and calms the populace. Interesting. Probably the city's the Senate. Uh, what would they call it? It's the center of... Aristotle, capital city, as long as it's held, calms the people. We hold these truths to be self-evident. Military or social guys, let me know if you have any ideas or uh, what, what kind of military or social events might hold the back of the Maltech zombie cultists. All right, industrial. I feel like it's probably farm belts. Farming complexes. Political. Is that listed as military? <laughs> oh, I like that. I like that the Jamaicans can get involved. No, that one was dumb. By the same cash, uh, since it's a Cold War, I feel like this is going to be the Patoli Special Forces. As long as these guys are in play, the Maltech Zombies are going to have a hard time. The Hall of History. Open forum where debates are still held today. All right, that covers our Ptolemaios versus Maltech zombie cult. Begin extinction. Uh, screaming void mines. These people are insane psychopaths. I feel like they're not going to have that many military. Well, no, that's not true. Right? What do they, what do they have? Asset. Screaming void mines have Vanguard cadres. All right, they have intelligence operatives. And they're military. I don't want to discount them. So apparently they tend heavily toward military. I'm going to give them three. Some social, political, industrial. Fortresses, training areas, significant supply depots. Screaming void mines. Obviously they need a... Uh, Recruitment centers across major city. Across capital city. Another place is a training base located in the badlands of the destroyed planet. And the final thing is that they hold the gate to the uh, demagogue. That's the evil, psionic, alien monster that's been sealed on this world. They hold that gate, and they're just trying to get it open. Social. What do they got behind them socially? Holy sights. I mean, they can't also have the gate to there, but they need some sort of deep-seated legitimacy. We'll roll for it again. 
We shall roll for it. Social. Offer us a major population center that is a symbol of normal life. Uh, the city of... Let's call it New Newport. Where they openly live. So, instead of trying to hide themselves among the population, New Newport is like Dearborn in America. Dearborn's a place where the population is almost entirely Muslim. I feel like New Newport is the place where the streaming void mines go to live openly. Political. Business holdings. A vital business holdings where vital government lobbying takes place. An industrial is going to be a research center for free tech psionesis. New Newport is going to get bombed to death. <laughs> On the planetary government side, uh, they military. They hold the Planetary Command Center. As long as they have that, they can justify a war. Uh, industrial. They have... Millions of skilled experts. Shipbuilding and vehicle creation. As long as they have those, they can keep pumping out uh, industry, technology, that kind of thing. And, uh, let's say political. They... They hold the loyalty. Government has paid for the... Shipbuilding does refer to spaceships. Pay for the loyalty of the gate uh, surrounding nobility. All right, let's make sure that that gate is definitely going to be a point of conflict. Oh boy, there's going to be a lot going on there. We'll come back to that later. There's a lot. Oh, there's a lot going on here. All right, so these people. Uh, don't want to defend themselves. So militarily, they have a shield generator. And then everything else is just like industrial. They have pre-tech junk processing facility. Social is Golden City. Their capital, Utopia. And they need one more political. Uh, the will of the people who not kill all the savages. I mean, as soon as they lose that, the shit is going to break down. You can barely read this on your spreadsheets. Ah! I see we've come to a thing that I haven't explained that well. So, over on the trade side, over here, in this sector of the galaxy, humanity has been in space for perhaps a decade or so, right? Over here, humanity has been in space for over 150 years. St spaceships, trade... All of that, spike drives, are not a rarity. Uh, they just don't know to go anywhere else. Stay with down here. All of these systems are relatively close together. They simply have advanced ships, but don't know to make a, you know, one, two, three sector jump blindly into the middle of nowhere. All right, what do these guys got? Probably a lot of military and social. No industrial at all because they're tech level zero. 
The military. Recruitment camp at the Lust Pits. Uh, I think the Lust Pits is going to be some place where all the tribes bring their people to all bang each other. Uh, they are, I mean, when this says TL0, it's literally like pre-tools. It means these guys don't even have access to metal. Uh, they're, they're like Stone Age, literal Stone Age, banging rocks together. So, yeah, they've got the Lust Pits. Uh, and that's where they do their thing. I think that another thing they're going to have militarily is a uh, barricade around the Golden City. So they've created a physical blockade, like a wall made of tanned hides and wooden construction around the massive huge thing. It never happened that an NPC navigator rolled a five and accidentally jumped across the galaxy. No, it hasn't happened yet. Sorry, friend. Uh, strong point. Newly erected strong point of catapults that are constantly throwing rocks at the shield. So imagine a giant, almost Stargate Atlantis style massive shielded city it's like a death star kind of except there's no weapon on it uh and that's where the golden city is that's where all these pretech cultists live and they just don't bother these screaming horde people because they have a giant shield that they keep them out but now that shield is constantly going off they're firing rocks night and day uh and the shield is constantly like going like wump 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 and it annoys the shit out of the local populace Oh, industrial doesn't actually have to be a physical industry. Apparently, industrial can mean croplands that produce fermenting materials. I mean, they got to get drunk if they're going to less pits. Uh, training. Oh, sorry, this is industrial. This is a training center for TL1 smithing. Forging, metal making. Even these screaming hordes of savages. There's like a thousand engineers that have gotten together. Oh yeah, you guys said you were having trouble reading the small text. Work on that. Boop ba doop boop boo doop boo. All right, it's gonna be harder to see now. But there we go. Scene. I feel like 14 probably would have been okay, but... I could use some suggestions for the fight on Thordis, by the way. With these screaming hordes. I need three more points. Catch up on chat. Is the shield like having a strobing effect flickering all the time? Yeah, probably something like that. It's just annoying, right? They can't get through the shield, but they can annoy the shit out of people. Testing chamber sounds pretty sinister. Um. Ooh. Site of the famous victory at Wolcott, where the hordes sacrifice. Two million men to finally force the cultists back into their golden city. The six billion knights. <laughs> yeah, all right, what do we got? Six. We'll make a political, and it's going to be Wealthy family of well-spoken aristocrats that travel by foot to gather new soldiers. And of course, if you kill these people, you're new soldiers. Well, less soldiers. 
and less amped soldiers. Four, one, two, three. We'll go with another military. Transit point where all the armies gather. So there's a location where all the armies gather up and probably like if you attacked it on mass with a bombing run or just ran it's like a giant flat plane okay so i think that just leaves Ul Bo Ugh. Ul garopolis Ul garopolis date packed oh man i'm really not feeling making all these vital points out of nowhere we'll come back to it i want to be lazy and Get to the next part where we do cooler stuff. With the war salted with a sufficient number of vital points, you're ready for the last step of the process. You need to determine what military forces are involved in the war and scale the conflict to a level the PC side can meaningfully participate in. Of course, if you're running a classical sandbox, there are doubtlessly many wars wrecking the cosmos, but unfathomably vast struggles and tiny border skirmishes aren't relevant enough. Start by identifying the PC allied side of the conflict. Blah, 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 blah. Equally matched forces will generally result in allied victories. Uh, you don't want to make any enemy forces 50% more powerful than the other side. Okay, blah, blah, blah. Be careful about creating too many units. Did I miss the chapter where we make the planetary army? Building armies and mercenary legions. Planet 50. Page 52. Okay. Defining units. By counting hits. All right. For a planetary armory with a history of warfare but no need for military, assume 1% of the civilian population. Let's look through here and see who is a defensive low population. Uh, the Ptolemaios are not, and neither are the Maltech zombie cult. They literally have one million soldiers uh, at tech level zero. For a polity currently at war expecting to be, 5% of them are enlisted. All right, good. I got to get my calculator out. Calculator, I choose you. Sonic Amplitude. Times 0 0.05 is 25 million soldiers. All right, and then we've got uh, 1 million soldiers and 5,000 EL5. That should even things up just a little bit. Probably there's going to be a very serious leadership difference between these two forces. Ten percent in cases of emergency war. All right, so these guys have five thousand, and these guys have one percent of five million, which is five thousand. Right? No, that might be wrong. I might have missed a zero in there. Yep, it's 50,000. Bargulopoleos. Alright, the psionic... I mean, the perimeter agencies decide that's attacking. So, of course, they're going to have a better and larger army. 5% uh, of 3,000. 15,000 soldiers. Check level three. And the Jade Pact has 400,000 possible units at 1%, which is 4,000 at tech level four. Give me a rough conflict, that one. Lourdes. Wow. Wow. Uh, well, they're going to get. 10% because they are putting everything into this war effort. Uh, so that's 99 million times 0.1 is 9 million. 
10 million soldiers, basically. And still, I think they will probably lose versus the 1% of 10,000 trained DL5 simply because they can fire guns <laughs> and not have to kill people with axes. All right, so let's see here. Determine an army size. Determine the maximum number of units. This is equal to the army's average tech level, plus the worst of the supreme leader's tactics or leadership, plus the sum of the leader's wisdom, intelligence, and charisma modifiers. Undisciplined rabble have this, rounded up, and exceptional elites with biological or cultural war augmentation may increase this up to 50%. So, let's work it out. Maximum number of units. Uh, I feel like Potomayos here definitely has a very smart leadership. They probably have very good leadership or tactics, so I'm going to give them a 2 plus 4 for their tech level and the sum of their wisdom, intelligence, charisma. So I'm going to give them... Wow, they're actually going to be really, really good at war. Uh, so it's 4, 5, 6, 7, 8... Uh, and so they have eight units. The Maltech Zombie Cult is going to probably have the exact same, except they have Tech Level 5, and they are prepared for uh, combat, so they're going to round that up by 50%. So 9 plus 50 is 13, which is going to give them a, an edge in the field. Use the unit size table to split the army into a number of units. We'll do that. You're going to have a corps and several battalions. Give each unit a leader. Give each unit a type, a name, and an info card. Man, we're going to be here for a long time, guys. <laughs> I hope you're ready for some prep. This is very involved, but it does make for a very fast play once it's set down. Okay. Streaming Void Mines. Uh, probably they're not... Oh, no, they actually have a research center. Okay. They're probably really pretty educated. I'm going to give them tech level 4, plus 1 in leadership or tactics, plus, let's say, 2. Uh, so that's, what, eight? 8 units. The other side has a planetary command center, so I'm going to give their leader a 2 in tactics uh, and 2 there. So 4 plus 2 plus 2 is 8 as well. Let's jump this down to seven. Bargo Apoleos. Uh, the Jade Pact. Let's see here. Yeah, it's because I didn't do this one yet. It's all going to be out of order. Yeah, I mean, the TL5 guys could gas them, but there's literally 99 million people. So the thing that's driving this conflict is that the TL5 guys don't want to kill. Let's explain that further. They believe they're so much better than the rest of the galaxy because they have such high technology that they don't need to wipe out these pathetic cretins and could just hide behind their shield. And when they go to war... It will be either defending themselves from the players on a contract or it'll be hiring the players to kill their enemies for them while they, with their units, remain defensive. Okay. I feel like the perimeter agency, with its psychics and all that junk, is pr and they have some learning... So, they're 3 plus 1 for tactics or leadership. Well, let's give them a 2 for leadership. That's 5. They're gonna have uh, people with a 2 in intelligence or charisma because they have psychics. So, that's gonna be 5 plus... Uh, 5 is 10. And they're on the attacking side. So they're gonna have 15. Wow, that's brutal. <laughs> that's really brutal. On the other side, they're going to have eight.
These guys have five, and they have superhuman ability. Uh, I'm going to give them a three in leadership. That's eight. And then I'm going to give them two in all their stats. So that's six, six, six. Uh, well, two, two, two for six. Uh, so that's 14. The other side is zero in tactics, leadership, maybe be a one. Uh, they're, they literally, we'll give them, you know what, a two. They're going to have two giant armies. How customizable is a company itself? Can it specialize in certain combat styles and make them famous? Yes, and we will get to that. Although company isn't the correct term for it. The smallest unit that you can make is a battalion, which is at least three companies. Uh, you probably meant the Mercenary Legion as a company. However, that now I'm thinking out loud that that was what you really... Okay, divide the army into units. So we need the unit size chart. We have 25 million units to split... Uh, 25 million soldiers to split into eight units. 25 divided by eight is three million in each. Uh, which is a theater. Wow, okay. They can make eight theaters. Sure, let's do that. Uh, theater. 3.1. And we're going to need names for all of these. So probably it's all going to be famous Greek people. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. Okay. Uh, I mean, if you guys have famous Greek people, you would like to have armies named after. Uh, their strength level is 16 all around. It's like the best. All right, they have 13 units that they can split between 1 million and 5,000. That 5,000 is probably going to become a... Brigade, uh, and that brigade, 5,000, let's start, 5,000, brigade, and it has a combat power of 1. You can see the difference between these two. You gotta go with Spartan, very well. Company 1 is Spartan Company. Spartan Theater. Uh, let's go with number two. We got to split one million zombies up, but we'll probably just turn them into one million into one unit, and you'll see why later. Uh, army front. Strength of 12. Uh, so now they have a lot of leadership points, but a bunch of open army spots, and this will be important later. They're going to get a ton of absolute ridiculous ton of bonus leadership points thousand seven yes writing things down seven units okay five thousand uh is enough to create a brigade but instead we could probably make a couple battalions so we'll make a primary brigade of three thousand And then that'll leave us with four. So we got four battalions of 500. Uh, these guys have 50,000 to split eight ways. probably do five divisions and that'll leave them with a little bit of flexible leadership points All right so brigade has a base strength of one zero 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 Division has a base strength of two. I forget to put that back over here. Nope, I got it. All right, let's see here. Poseidon Company, the Hydra. Okay, Hydra. 
Poseidon. Poseidon. Works for me. Uh, this is going to be called The Light of Liberation. First Zombie Army Front. Gorgon Theater. I didn't leave enough space for names over here. Well, the easy way to solve that is move everything over. One punch. One punch! Uh, Screaming Void Mines. First Battalion is going to be the Psychic Resonance. Resonance Brigade. Special Operations Battalion number one. Uh, and we'll have two, three, four, and five. Well, and four. All right, divisions, planetary government. I don't know that we outlined the... Uh, oh, Baltics. Okay. I don't know that much about the Baltics. Really should have researched. Milos. Chick. Uh... I really just want to do Baltic Avenue. Chariot. Okay. Hercules. I mean, that's a that's a go-to. Hades. And we'll end with Ajax. All right. I'm going to pull up old Google's Baltics. What do we got in the Baltics? Estonia, Latvia, and Lithuania. Crimea. Ooh, that's a good one. I like that. Crimea brings out. We're the Crimean Division. Division 3, Crimean Division. Danes Company. Estonia Company. Company always on my mind. Oh boy. Okay. Uh, they're just gonna have one brigade, and <laughs> they're gonna put everything behind it. So let's do it. They have one brigade of four thousand soldiers, and it is strength level one. On the other hand, these guys are going to have three brigades. I literally take bridge. Imagine if I had to do this for 20 systems instead of six. Be here forever. Alpha Company. Good one. Druid. Christian. Saxon. You dare believe that you can stand against the Saxon Brigade, son? Uh, these guys have 10 million split two ways, so 5 million apiece. These guys have 10,000, and they're probably just going to keep it in two different units, so two brigades of 5,000 apiece. Close. One more over. Uh, 
Gate size units are pretty popular. Uh, uh. Band of the Red Hand. Of course. Here we go. We've even got Army of the Said Eye. Facing them are Xenos Brigade and uh, Knight Brigade. Oh, the Grey Knights. Xeno, no, no. What are the three orders? Order uh, Xenos, Order Heretica, and Ordos. It. Well, chat will catch up with me and I'll get them in there. One, one. This is. Team. It's gonna be a rough fight here. Doesn't look like it, but it will be rough, trust me. Malleus. The three orders of Warhammer 40k. Okay, decide whether each unit is infantry, armored, air, sea, or artillery. Interesting. Well, Hydra and Poseidon are going to be... I'm going to have to separate these even more. Hydra is going to be C, as will Poseidon. So these are marine units. Armored air infantry. Well, this has definitely got to be infantry. Gorgon and Chariot are armored... Uh, air, infantry. Did I miss one? Uh, artillery. Wow, that's literally 3.1 pe million people. 3.1 million people assigned to running an artillery unit. My gosh, there's got it. That's got to be so expensive. <laughs> this is gonna be brutal. Uh, and these guys are armored, and they're infantry. This is gonna be a bad conflict. They're gonna die super fast, but Maltech Zombie Cult. It's so fascinating because in regards to the faction turn, they will win instantly. But if the players accept this as a contract, it's gonna be really, really bad. All right, uh, let's separate these guys up. Screaming Void Mines don't need uh, very much, so they're going to be uh, infantry. And then they will specialize with artillery, air, armored, and no C, so they'll probably just have a second armored division. These guys are going to have one of each because they're a planetary navy. So, inventory, armored, air, C, artillery. Estonia division, dropping rocks on you. 2020. Alpha Company Infantry. And then we've got Infantry. Air. Because you need your angels coming from above. And Saxon are armored. And on Thordis, uh, we need to separate these a bit more. Xenos uh, has got to be armored. Malleus is infantry, and these guys are all infantry. Actually, we're going to make the whole combat. Oh, everything is going to be infantry. Two infantry. All right. Let's see here. Throw a handful of dice on the Crick World table on page 56 to add individual flavor to a unit. Interesting. What special abilities will be granted to PC squad members who fight alongside these units in battle? A strong force of worm riders mounted on siege dragons are tank-like enough to be qualified as an armored unit. If only we had that kind of technology. It would be fucking amazing. Uh, as a last step in creating your army, divide the info card up. 
Where's the thing where if you have more leadership than you need and all right aside from military advantages of combined arm units they grant special support abilities of pc squads if there's an artillery unit on the battlefield pc can call in the artillery strike perfect uh a unit can be called upon for support once permission for every four points of strength it has rounded up excellent Yeah. Sorry, I'm looking for the thing that allows me to use leftover points. Oh, we need to write this part down. Field squad. Uh, all PCs gain the skill profession soldier with zero and combat zero for their skills. Perfect. Creating a mercenary legion. Hiring troops, blah, blah, blah. We'll get around to that. Forming units. Once you've made a mercenary unit, take them. Sorry, I'm reading at very high speed. Uh, building a mercenary unit. Focus on a single battalion. Blah, 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 blah. PL4 Infantry Battalion has a base of zero for its size, plus one for organic support, plus one more for being an elite group of carefully selected recruits. It can get you add its unused leadership potential. All unused leadership points can be added to a battalion strength. Perfect. That's what I was looking for. A one for one exchange. Sorry, we're back now. Okay, so these guys have no leftover unit support. They have 16 straight down the board. These guys have 11 points of unit support left. Uh, they can uh, put four of it into here, into the zombie army, bumping it up to a final play of 16. Uh, 11 minus four is seven, and this becomes an eight. All right, so yeah, they're still gonna get the shit kicked out of them really badly. The only good news is that the Maltech zombie cult's the one offensive. Uh, and the instant that turns around is when they lose. They have five units, which means they have two left over uh, port, and they're going to put that all into their psionicist brigade, bringing it up to eight. Guys have three left over, and they're going to put it all into their primary infantry, bringing it up to a five. Uh, and just because I feel like I didn't explain it that well. <clears throat> Eight is representative of the technology, the command and control, the charisma of the leadership, the intelligence and leadership tactics. That's the, that's the amount of units it could maximally use. If you are using less than that, you have way more ability to command and control individual units. And so that's what the mercenary legions use is they put all of their bonus stuff into making a zero strength battalion and then throwing their whole leadership ability. Uh, these guys have seven more points, bringing them up to an eight. These guys have 12 more points. Oh, I forget to... Some numbers here. Uh, 5,000 upgrade is one, one, one. Uh, and they can each take, so 12 is 4, 4 and 4, 5, 5 and 5, which will make an interesting war. And on Thordis, <laughs> yeah, these guys are about to skyrocket. They're going to become 8 and 8. And these guys can't go anywhere. 
Uh, you might think these don't look that close. 8 and 8 versus 16 and 16. However, notice that they have tech level 5, which is added to the roll, and these guys have tech level 0. So those 8s become 13. Way closer than it looks. Okay. We've got support abilities. We're going to pick... Apparently, people say that I mumble a lot and the bottom end of my voice drops out, especially if I'm not facing the microphone correctly. Jedi Muffin! We are going to write a macro that will, for one unit in every army, make it be primary flagship. Uh, this is the Starship Enterprise for them, and this is called... Oh, it's going to be called Temporary Army Macro. I don't accidentally use it later. And it's a slash roll. 1d6 plus 8 plus 10 plus 1d4. 1d12 plus 1d20. Perfect. First unit. Get to the results in a second. Five, four, one, four, three, seven. Spartans, prepare for glory. All right, Spartan Company has got some things going on with it. Once, unit commander believed, unit thinks, the unit is untrustworthy and prone error or retreat. On a four, it's exceptionally proud, proud of its superb leadership on a one it's <laughs> whoever suggested spartan for the name of this army theater is amazing its greatest past glory was a glorious last stand where almost all perished wow that's good that's good that's i mean can't get better than that Its situation is improving with better leadership. I see what's happening here. Bitter shame is a cowardly flight in a desperate, important battle. And with the seven, its equipment is in poor repair. So... At some point, they ran from an important battle and were chased down by the enemy. They gave a heroic last stand. And since then, some very good leaders picked from all the other theaters have come in to rebuild the unit from the ground up, and morale's slowly going up. The problem is they're getting second-hand equipment from all the other theaters. Uh, and so while they may be the flagship, they're not very good. All right, let's talk about the zomb zombie army. Zombie. Well, no. I don't give a shit about the zombies. They're uninteresting. Uh, and they also don't have equipment, because they're zombies. Three, two, four, two, eight. All of them. Boom. They did the mash. Monster mash. A monster mash. It was a graveyard bash. They are led by a firm and reliable unit. Uh, they are exceptionally proud of their inventiveness. And, well, in strange surrounds. 
Their greatest past shame was defense of the ruler in the face of dire odds. There was a point where the cult was almost wiped out and the light of the Lord protected them. Uh, lead, current leadership is the leadership is improving. Without even having whippings. Uh, obedience to now despised heresy is the greatest shame. Well, that's the not being a Maltech cultist. How do you recruit zombies? You go out and you infect them with nanotechnology. Or you use mimetic viruses. You create keywords and hypnotic patterns that entice people to do things. Memes. Memes so bitter, no one can avoid them. Their current problem is civilian leaders are using them as toys and props. So they could, it's interesting, they could defend with all of their units and then attack with two units. Cover all their vital points and still have enough to go after the cultists, which is probably what they're going to do. Uh, and the cultists need to attack if they want to win. Whatever happened to Transylvania? Find out what the psionic cultists think. Two, seven, four, one, sixteen. Da 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 da. They are a firm and reliable unit. With a ferocity and overwhelming vigor. So these are the kind of things that I'll be telling the players when they engage this unit. I'll be like, this is a storied unit. You've heard the following things about them. And then I'll try to make it true in game. Or on the other hand, we could make it false in game. We could show them that the reputation this unit has is completely wrong. Their greatest past glory. Seizing enemy strongholds. One's thought invincible. I am invincible. Their current situation is confused. Too many recruits. Makes sense. They're the they're not a special operations group like all the others. They're uh, a psychic operations brand. Their bitterest past shame was the coming to an usurper. And their current problem is a 16. The troops feel little love for their leaders. I mean, yeah, that's how zombieism spreads, Joker. That's how zombieism spreads. Reach out with their little psychicness and they get you. They get you. I want you to read those memes. Oops. Pluses five, six, one, three, nine, two. They've got me, sir. They've got me good. I can't stop reading the memes. There's cats. There's cats everywhere. This unit is considered untrustworthy, prone to error. They're exceptionally proud of their advanced technology. Uh, what's next? A one. Greatest past glory was a glorious last stand. Stand where they were nearly wiped out. Their current situation is decaying. Leadership is flawed. Bitterest past shame is a nine. They proved useless. Moment of need. Uh-oh. What was that? 
And the final thing, the problem facing unit right now is it's starved for necessary resources. So they'll probably have ammunition problems and the like. Get a scope for your knife. Fucking... Fucking Zonalar. Tell me that dude's batshit crazy. 4, 4, 3, 2, 11, 18. I think that sounds a bit different than what we've had so far, so I'm curious. See how it all turns out. Alpha Company! hoo They are somewhat questionable. Not for hard jobs. They are proud of their long tradition of superb leadership. Which makes sense, because they literally have seven units of leadership. They're extremely flexible. In fact, they're basically like a small mercenary brigade. Greatest past glory was overcoming a superior foe with their wits. Current problem is number two. Steady situation. No problems. Bitterest past shame was a great fortress was taken by their carelessness. And the current problem facing it is civilian leaders use them as toys and props. They've got the Captain America thing going on where in the first Captain America movie, they had him going out dancing with the girls, trying to get people to buy war bonds, and all the soldiers are like, fuck you, Captain America. You're useless as shit. And he was like, you know what? I literally have a shield that can stop bullets. I'm going to go fight fool." truth in American way. Four, six, seven, three, one, eleven. The Druid Brigade. They got some problems. They are known to be questionable. Also, they're proud of their advanced technology. But... Their greatest past glory was making an impossible march. To relieve an ally. It's a good day to die. When you know the reasons why. Decaying morale. Everyone hates the leaders. Oh love of the halfling's weed has clouded your mind, Gandalf. They're succumbing... To the blandishments? I don't even know what that means. Derper. And finally, for the last problem they suffer, <clears throat> the planetary ruler believes they have insulted her. Commander Alpha. Ba -ba -da -ba. Ba -ba -ba. Two, six, four, four, three, twenty. Well, no surprise that the special high tech guys get the twenty. I believe twenty is they have no problems at all. You guys are literally the privileged few. Their unit commander believes they are firm and reliable. Let's man, we put some more music. You have proven yourselves to be a reliable unit. Six. They are exceptionally proud of their advanced sector. Well, of course they should be. They're the only people in the galaxy using TL5 besides some very small number of other people. Their greatest past glory was seizing enemy stronghold. Look, a lot of these are repeating a lot. A statistically improbable number of repeats. This current situation is improving morale. Bitterest past shame was a cowardly fight in a desperately important battle. 
Uh, I think that's going to be these 5,000 men faced down 2 million and had to retreat. Process. And they got no problems. Nothing about their unit is malfunctioning. <laughs> five. One, five, two, four, nine. This is last unit. They are untrustworthy. Five million men have been labeled untrust. Oh, shit. that accidentally over right. Sudden's gonna cringe when he hears this. Uh, they are exceptionally proud of their excellent drill and speed of maneuver. Which literally means that they walk very fast. They're an infantry unit at TL0. <laughs> Son, we're glad that you're capable of walking at a four mile per hour pace. You're the greatest thing that's ever been invented. Sir, they're literally using vehicles that appear to teleport through the sky. They could drop rops on us from above. But we can walk really, really fast. These guys are gonna get fucking destroyed. So destroyed. Oh yeah, the recruitment camp is the Lutz Pits. Uh, greatest past glory, number five. Rising to drive out enemy occupiers of land. I like how this is tying together. There were two million people that died at uh, the site of Wolcott. And I believe the band of the red hand is the one that did it. Hopefully they're lucky enough. Well, I can tell you they didn't roll. Uh, <laughs> oh my gosh, you're so wrong. And I'll show you why in a minute. Uh, Betty morale. Their bitterest past shame is mutiny against their commander. And the number nine pick is it has this. It's suffering a depressing string of bad luck <laughs> this is a terrible unit it's so bad at everything all right so we've got all these units you're wondering right now what do we do with them why do we have all these points what does it all mean i'll tell you what it means we do what's called a war turn when old battles are resolved and new battles are engaged, the war turn takes place at the end of a gaming session once a PC squad has resolved a success or failure. It's possible to run several consecutive war turns if the PCs aren't going to be involved in the fray. The first thing that's done is resolving the battles of the prior war turn. So what this means is at the end of the session, you do a war turn run. Uh, and that sets up the next mission, right? The players would be like, oh, you know, we know that there's a battle here, here, and here. We want to get involved here and try to turn the tide. Then, the next episode, they try to turn the tide. And at the end of the session, you do another war turn based on the events that happened. At the beginning of the war turn, you resolve all the ongoing battles. And then you decide what your next steps are going to be. So, the first thing that is done, resolve battles. The next step is that each side is allowed to activate their units. Actions are determined simultaneously each side recording and revealing their actions. Uh, each unit may be assigned to take one action. Attack an enemy vital point, rest and recover, or stand in reserve. Uh, yes, they do have literal hordes of sheep and cows to feed the army. And they have 99 million people, so they probably have plenty of livestock and crops. Uh, but at TL0, they they have to do it all by hand. They don't even have things like flag technology. They just organize hordes by moving them slowly towards the enemy. Uh, and they can't even get past those dang shields. So probably taking down that shield generator is the thing that the band of the red hand wants. So, back to the war turn. Each unit can take one action. Attack an enemy vital point. 
which means they can pick something from this list over here and attack it. Or they can rest and recover, which they roll and attempt to get some hit points back. Or they can stand and reserve. You're thinking, what does stand and reserve mean? Stand and reserve is a defensive action. Instead of attacking, you just set your units aside, and if an enemy attacks one of your battle points, you can assign any of your, or all of your units, counterattack. Anything you've reserved, you can counterattack. So for instance, over here, Otomayos, they can leave six units on reserve to guard all six of their vital points. Uh, but if they do that, they can only attack with two. Let's say that these guys reserve their units as well. That means all six of the Potomayos units can't do anything. They're stuck trying to defend. On the other hand, if the Maltec zombie cult attacks Light of Liberation and literally nowhere else, all six units can just be like, cool, we're going to defend the capital and just dive bomb them. Just absolutely murder death run. So, what do we mean by attacking a vital point? When you attack a vital point, the attacker needs one unit which hasn't been assigned to R&R &R reserves. A single unit can only attack one vital point each war turn. End of a war turn, the defender may resist the attack by placing one or more units from reserves. They then roll against each other using their dice. Depending on how much the winner win by, it determines how many steps of damage you take. Each unit has four steps of damage for the size that they are. So, for instance, if the theater takes a step of damage, they move down... What's the damage called? Uh, right there. Better write this. Conditions. There we go. All right. Copy paste. All right. Conditions are fresh, ready, bloodied, crippled. After you get hit with crippled, your unit size decreases by one. So, what does this mean? If a theater-sized unit gets hit four times, it is reduced to being a crippled theater. If it gets hit a fifth time, it loses enough troops to drop from theater down to the next largest size. Hold. Army front. Uh, if you have an army front that gets crippled, can drop in size down to an army, to a corps, to a division, to a brigade, to a battalion. In fact, if a battalion is completely defeated, the army is routed entirely. That's it. It's done forever. It's gone. I don't. Where I'm keeping my player. Observation. And we're gonna. Where was I? Yes, the war turn. Mercenary legion, equipment, vital points, example war turn. That's it. So now all we need to do is create a example mercenary legion. And done, done, done. So many words are being swallowed. That's really weird. happens if I turn the noise gate off yeah but then my microphone gets stuck open which is not where I want to be I'm not even mumbling this time that's the weird part the thing is I don't want you guys to hear me sucking air like this I feel like it's very obvious when I take a breath while I'm speaking something along the lines of what I just did or like this. And then it just, it sounds disgusting to me when I go back and listen to it. it bothers me a lot, but I'll keep trying to work with what I got here. It's having a lot of problems balancing it.
Denary Legion, blah, blah, blah. Let's get to the example, because that's what we're going to use. All right, example Mercenary Legion. First step is to decide who's going to lead. Working together, the PCs can do a... Uh, they get a one wisdom, intelligence, charisma, tactics, leadership. One, 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 two. Uh, the leader is going to be a lieutenant colonel. Everybody else is going to be a major. Uh, one person takes general and the other people take the rest of the roles. Let me double check and see what the other roles are. Eggs. We're creating the brass. not working brass the brass there we go we need a general who's always the leader uh, so our lieutenant colonel is a general and then we need a quartermaster someone's i mean several people are gonna have to take multiple jobs intelligence officer Senior NCO politician. Uh, and I think these guys get bonuses based on how the brass does things. Let's see here. Maybe not. Benefit. Playing the brass. Oh, here it is. Once, okay, so if you're the general, once per session, the client can predict what a group of enemies within sight of the squad are going to do. Oh, dang, that's actually pretty cool. Write these down. All right, whoever's playing the general uh, can predict what the enemy is going to do. The quartermaster player. Once per session, the client instantly finds, produces, or is provided something that might plausibly be issued to the squad that is small enough to have reasonably been on their person. This doesn't include vehicles, pre-tech, or other exotic implements, but could include a man portable weapon, reasonable amount of ammo, doses of stims, grenades, or tools. Cool. You can literally solid snake a rocket launcher out of your butt. The intelligence officer. Once per session, the client can ask a GM a question about the mission or enemy activity. Provided the information wouldn't solve or trivialize the objective, the GM will provide a sentence or two to reflect the thing. Senior NCO. Once per session, the client can re-roll a failed skill check or attack roll on their military role or specialization. This cannot stack with expert. The politician. Once per session, the client finds a native civilian or government official that is friends or allies, willing to help the squads to the limits of their courage and inducement. Even the craven and grasping will cooperate in ways that don't directly threaten their families or themselves. Perfect. Well, Zon, I hope that the number of words that I'm speaking don't get swallowed up anymore. Hope it's been greatly reduced. I also hope you like the sound of me gently sucking down oxygen because my face is like five inches away from this microphone. <laughs> and it's just too goddamn sensitive. Alright, let's finish making this mercenary lesion. I'm gonna pass it. You don't hear me sucking down oxygen. Well. Congratulations to me, and happy birthday to the ground. 
All right, the PCs are making their own legion. They divide their roles. Higher troops, their tech level is four, which makes sense. Most of the planets in this area have tech level of four. Uh, maximum of eight units. They are going to make a single battalion. They have 600 troops. Oops, 100. And a battalion. Uh, so they have 600 TL4 soldiers. Well, let's do it this way. 600. Perfect. That costs 2.4 million credits. You might wonder where the F did I come up with that? Zero, 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 zero. And the answer to that is uh, a chart that hires duty. A soldier at TL4, a contract, costs 4,000 apiece. At 600, that should check out. 4,000 times 600 is, in fact, 2.4 million. Uh, so it costs $4,000 a month to hire a soldier. Okay, yes, 600 does seem small, but consider consider the following. They only have one unit, which means they're going to have a ton of extra leadership skill. They're probably going to end up with a unit squad of seven, eight, nine, eight or nine at least. But uh, they're also going to have all of their PC abilities, and they're going to have... Uh, Artillery support. And a spaceship. Don't worry about it. That, so, the other thing to remember is the PCs will be fighting alongside the units on a either end. So they're not going to be alone in any conflict. None of these conflicts are one side versus nobody. And the PCs are hired to fight for the nobodies. All right. They don't have to worry about further soldier upkeep and dead soldiers will require one month's duty time. The battalion is a grav motorized infantry battalion. So, write that down. It is grav motorized infantry battalion. Uh, it grants the infantry... Well, let's move it from over here. Here. Grants infantry support to the PCs. Yes. Oh, I forgot to mention during the war turn. It's probably really important, so I should go back and say it. Uh, and I don't remember quite how it goes. I think it's along the lines of... Where is it? Pressing, recovering... If the PCs were involved in a matter... Shift the results. If they succeed at their main objective, increase the results by one. If they succeed in all objectives, increase by two. So what that means is, when you send the player character's squad into a battle, no matter how the war turn turns out, they will always, as long as they complete their primary objective, be able to help shift it from a complete loss to something better. And in all probability, if the PCs are getting involved, it's not going to be a complete loss. Uh, their activities on the battlefield greatly reduce the amount of damage incoming and greatly increase the amount of damage outgoing. All right, well, while I'm blah, blah, blahing, let's skip back to here. As a battalion, it needs two guns. Okay, so it has two guns, artillery guns. Uh, that's because it needs 10% of a battalion in order to become a uh right is that right let's see here to give a unit organic support one tenth of the numbers rounded up or necessary a battalion needs 18 guns in order to be an artillery battalion therefore uh 1.8 rounded up is two so in order to have artillery support for them they only need to buy two tl4 artillery pieces there is no point, this uh, this says, to buying a TL-3 gun, because, of course, they're a TL-4 battalion, and they already have motorized grav vehicles. Therefore, they got to go whole hog and buy very good artillery pieces. Uh, so, let's see here. 
They have the contracts. Two artillery uh, guns. They fast moving, self propelled EL4 guns. So what's interesting is they need to buy the contracts to maintain them. And then they have to pay for the actual guns themselves for 190000 So just having the people and equipment to maintain them is not the same as having the guns. Uh, and if they lose the guns, they have to buy a new gun, but the support contract doesn't go away. So now they also qualify for Grant's artillery support. And let me explain to you what those mean. The PC. Uh, there are cards back here that have them. Here we go. Infantry support. 1d6 squads of 10 soldiers are available and in the area. They can crush an equal or lesser number of enemies or pin down two to three times that number of enemies. They have standard squad gear. They take 1d6 plus times four minutes to arrive. Once arrived, they hold their position until defense is impractical. So yeah, you can just literally be like, hey dudes, we need 1d6 times 10 people to show up. And they'll be like, cool, we're here. Artillery support. The PCs can call in a artillery strike from an allied artillery battery. The strike will arrive in 1d6 minutes and is indiscriminate. The area affected can be small as 50 meters in diameter or as large as 300 meters. The friendly artillery unit is at least division size. The PCs may be authorized to call in a grand barrage that can hit everything in a small town. Such permission is usually related to a mission goal. Roll percentile dice. That percentage of targets is dead or disabled and an equal number are stunned and unable to make offensive actions. Civilian structures and barriers are wrecked while military ones have a 2 in 6 chance of being ruined. So anytime the PCs go into battle with their own squad in support, which is going to be almost all the time, they're going to be able to call in a large number of soldiers to support them, but more importantly, they can call in a fucking artillery strike to just blow away units. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and tell you what the other strikes are, except for orbital strike, because that's dumb. I mean, orbital strike literally just destroys the planet. Airstrike, slower than artillery, but more lethal to enemies under soft cover and capable of avoiding damage. It arrives in 1d6 times 2 minutes. A single group of enemies or vehicles in the open or under light cover are automatically destroyed or disabled, provided all foes are within a 200 meter radius. They literally kill everyone. Armor support. 1d6 tanks and protective infantry screens are in the area and will arrive in 1d6 times 4 minutes. They can destroy or perforate non-fortified buildings and emplacements or drive back and kill as many as 20 modern enemies or 100 primitive foes. After they complete whatever the immediate task is, they'll be called away to another part of the battlefield. There's a 1 in 6 chance that enemies with modern weapons can destroy a tank. Sea support. <laughs> Warships are equipped with heavy guns in the crews to use them, along with shore raiding marines that can be dispatched by swift grav landing. PCs may invoke this ally as any other type of support unit. <laughs> sea support's pretty good. But you gotta have a planet that has an ocean on it in order to have them. They got flex. They flex, yo. Alright, let's get back to making the unit. So, they can do infantry and artillery, which we see right now are very strong. Okay. They have one uh, battalion with organic artillery support. Two guns. They need a troop transport. They have a basic bulk freighter. Which will need to be named. If you have a name for a ship that's going to carry 600 people. Uh, it has four extended life support fittings. Uh, if you're wondering what this thing is, it's the exact same size as the ship from the Sons of Gold playtest. Uh, it's a cruiser-sized ship. That's all. Everything about it has been put towards life support. Uh, maximum crew, 640. And this costs uh, ship fittings. 
is messing up over and over. Five hundred thousand need extended stores times two uh, in order to make the ship habitable for eight weeks. This costs one hundred and twenty-five thousand. They also have to choose between getting a cargo lighter or assault drop pods. They do assault drop pods for 300,000 credits. This means that anytime the PCs use this, rather than taking a ship down, they can literally be fired in small eggs and land. If you've ever read Starship Troopers the book, which is very different than the movie, they use assault drop pods all the time, and they're fucking amazing. MechWarrior uses assault drop pods as well. The ship is named the Soma. Very well. Uh, 100, uh, 1,000 tons cargo space. Gear, guns, transport. They buy the ship Soma for 5.925 million credits. Now, they have a ship, but here's the thing. They're a mobile force, and they can't just go to any old shipyard. It's a cruiser. They need a cruiser-class ship contract to suggest the crew. They need to keep it uh, staffed. Uh, so, you know, they don't just need a captain and a science officer. They also need somebody to make food, cover operations. Ships are extremely expensive. And guess what? A ship's contract costs twice as much as the ship does it's 10 million credits to run a ship but as long as they have it they got the ship well i mean the ship could blow up but they'll have the support that's right one of the biggest mo i mean the ship and the ability to run the ship cost way more than the entire rest of the, sh the battalion combined so, as the players make money off of contracts, they are going to make money very quickly and be able to expand themselves. Because they've got a ship, they've got the contracts, now all they need to do is buy contracts for more infantry, right? Buying another battalion costs them 2.4 million. That's nothing. Compared to a $15 million ship? I feel like I accidentally moved away from the... making a... Making a mercenary legion. Here we go. Where do they buy the battalions and equipment? They can go to friendly planets uh, and recruit up to 5% of the local population. Uh, actually, it's way smaller than that. But a lot, most of the planets here have populations in the hundreds of millions. Uh, so, let's say they do a favor for the Kalta system. They can then probably flex on coming back to Kalta at any time and recruiting 500 more dudes to join the military. Let's see here. Uh, they have a TL4 battalion. So, final numbers. TL4 battalion has a base set of strength is zero. They get one for having a organic asset. Artillery. So they get a little bit of bonus strength. They also get one for elite units. They get seven for leftover leadership. Which means their final strength is nine. Uh, which means they hit very hard. The final cost of this unit costs 18,595,000 credits. And every month it must pay 408,000 credits. And where does that come from? Let's see here. Oh, that's probably the cost of maintaining field duty on TL4 soldiers is 400 times 600. 
240,000. Oh, the guns too. Uh, let's see here. Guns cost 4,000, so 8,000. Uh oh, I accidentally erased stuff, but I really don't want to mess this up. Oh, the cruiser costs 160. Write it down. They don't do the math, so I need to do it for myself. 160 uh, is for the cruiser, 8,000 for the guns, and the 600 soldiers times 400. 140,000. Uh, plus 160 is 408,000. Perfect. Uh, which is how much it costs to run this battalion every month. In order for the PCs to expand, they need to take contracts that pay at least that much. So, let's go to the contract page. So we can figure out the probable prices these conflicts will be offering the PCs. It changes depending on how advanced and how desperate each particular polity is. Polity meaning political group. Phone number. Where is the getting paid? Oh boy, I don't know where the getting paid is. Type. Comes to fighting. Field dressing. Complications. Sorry, y'all. Try and do this bit by bit. It's not all uh, put in the correct place. Well, it's not all flowing in a way that I like. Extra gear. Still not saying how much you pay. Oh, hey, drummer boy. How's it going? Oh, this is how much everybody gets paid at every rank. Good, because the players are among these ranks. All right, so maybe the how much people get paid is somewhere nearby. Oh yeah, we need a name for this battalion and it literally has a special forces name generator. <laughs> Welcome to the Focused Objectives Force, the FOF. God, I feel like that'd be a really good marketing slogan. Like a guy sitting in a chair facing away from you, he swivels slowly and is like, You have a problem. Is your planet overrun with barbarians? Focused objective force. We're here for you. and We've got your back. We have 600 top-of-the-line troopers ready to put boots on the ground in less than six days. We'll get down there. We'll get in there. Get out. Folks, the objective force. You can trust us. We've got your back. Alright, still looking for the part where people get paid. How do you write contracts for dollars? Robots. Paying mercenaries. Oh, there it is. For relatively small contracts, as a strong employer, a contract of payment is held in escrow. Provided lump sum. Nope, that says how they're paid, not how much they're paid. Legion is hired to do some blah, 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 blah. Using your foes. Still doesn't say how much. Don't worry about contract pay or details of the opposition. 
What the what? I want to know contract pay. <laughs> I can't believe the part about contract pay refers to tell you to go someplace else. And it doesn't even tell you where. This is a poorly written rule book. All right, here we go. Mercenary contract costs. All right. Uh, take the monthly basic value of the unit. Add 25%. Mercenary unit won't look at any contracts unless they have at least that much. So, uh, in order to hire this unit, you need 408,000 times 1.25. You need to pay 510,000. Increase or decrease the profit margin depending on the circumstances of the war. Okay. Catalyst system. Uh, client's existence is at stake is on the zombie Maltech side and on the other side. So they're going to offer plus 75% on both sides. Client is notably impoverished, uh, is minus 25% and client's enemy is currently winning. Okay. Well, somebody's going to offer a very, very large amount of money. Uh, I'm 1.75. All right, so the contract for this side is 892,500,000. Contract for this side is uh 500,000. much? Just 510,000. Something special is going on. Meta. Both sides are fighting for survival. Client's existence is at stake. Uh, probably the side with thousands of soldiers is winning. So. Oh, and you know what? I'm betting that this side will offer rich plunder. So that's 100% minus 50. So times 1.5. 765,000. And they'll offer. They offer. A large amount of the planetary defenses as plunder. The other side is offering however much that is. Uh, blah, 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 blah. They are. Existence is at stake. No. No, it is at stake. Yes. So times 1.75, 892, 500,000. Okay, Vargulopolis, the Sionicist pack. They're going to pay a lot because they have uh, existence at stake, enemy currently winning, and they have a history of mercenary abuse. So, uh, 150,000, 150%. One, 2.5. It will pay 1 million. Ooh, ooh, I accidentally erased it. I'm bad at spreadsheets. Five ten zero 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 times two point five one million two hundred seventy five thousand history of mercenary. The other side is winning and doesn't care. They will offer five hundred and ten. On Thordis, existence is at stake for uh, the pre-techers, and for over here, they're offering a pre-tech plunder. So, enemy side currently winning, 510,000 times 2 is 1,020,000. These guys are offering basically nothing. They're offering 510 halved for 255,000. However, they are also offering plunder PL5 technology. You basically can't get that anywhere else except if you steal it from Maltech cultists. So that's an incredibly good deal that you might not see. 
Perfect. All right, what's the question? How many sessions do you think it will take for the players to end a certain conflict or complete a contract? Uh, given that almost everything is brigade-sized, uh, and let's say brigade's going to take two to three hits, probably take five to six sessions to end a conflict. For massive super conflicts like over here, over here, where we got theater sized units, it's going to take a very long Well, no, that's not true. They have such a large number of units, they could just funnel in and destroy. Five to six sessions doesn't sound too bad. My estimation. I don't really know because obviously I haven't done it before. But... All right, now we need. Oh, it's 10 o'clock. I think we're going to have to have a fifth, a secret fifth session uh, next week. If I have Friday open again. Where we create missions. And these are going to be specific templates. They're not going to have anything filled in, right? But there are missions that when the players go to do... When the players are like, okay, cool, we're going to attack this place. I need to be able to pull out a mission on the spot and be like, cool, here's what you're doing. Here are the players, right? So, uh, even though this was prep session 4 of 4, be back next time for prep session 5 of 4. If you've been following along with all this prep, you should know that we ran a playtest of the Sons of Gold. A lot of people enjoyed it. Nobody said anything bad about it. I don't know whether that's just because they don't like saying bad things or whether everybody just thought it was good. But that's the problem with life. You know, it's really hard to get proper feedback. So anyway, consider going to watch it. And uh, I'll see you next time. We'll find somebody for y'all to watch.